Hello and welcome. Today I've got here a skeleton, as you can see. This is part of the modular Oldberg Fallen Ones from Artisan Guild. I picked this up a few months ago and have been wanting to paint them just because they've got oh, so much character. I'm going to be uh, speed painting him a bit because normally when you have skeletons, you have a lot of skeletons. I specifically use a lot of skeletons in my Dungeons & Dragons campaign and normally I use them as cheap chaff to sort of overrun my players. And as such, I'm going to need a lot, so I don't want to spend too much time on him. So I'm going to show you simple, easy techniques to just get him as striking as possible on the table. Uh, a word of note, these models, like most of Artisan Guild's models come modular. You glue them together, normally the hands separately. As you can see, I've glued his hand on backwards. I somehow printed the wrong hand and didn't notice until after the glue had dried. So if you're going to be doing the same at home and following along with this tutorial, keep in mind that you glue the hands on the right way around. But you know what? Skeletons, broken bones, eh, it works. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Now, normally when I'm painting contrast, I'll start with a Wraithbone primer, much like this, and slap some contrast paints on. And there we go. However, I found an interesting technique from Sonic Sledgehammer's YouTube account that I'll be using today, and that is to first use some Agrax Earthshade. This is going to sort of go into all of the recesses and darken down the entire model making sure that when I do apply the contrast paints, I have very nice shadowy areas that the contrast paint can sort of work with. The end result with this is that the contrast paints look a lot darker in the recesses and a lot grimier overall, which I think is going to look perfect with the skeleton. So let me go around and just basically dunk this entire model on Agrax Earthshade the true sonic sledgehammer way, and then we'll take it from there. With that done, I now have some rack white, which is a dry paint. It's a nice creamy off-white, and I'm just going to do a little dry brush over all the higher areas just to bring out some of the raised areas and make them a bit brighter. What this is going to do is have a very, very nice contrast then between the dark recesses with the shade and the upper areas with this. It's almost like a zenithal highlight. All of the prep work is done and now we can get started with the contrast paints. I'm going to start off with the easiest way to paint a horde of skeletons. Skeleton horde contrast paints. <laughs> I've got a little bit of my palette here and I'm just going to, now that I've got this foundation, slap this all over the bony bits. Contrast paints, for those of you who have never used them, seep very nicely into the recesses, working almost like a wash, as well as staining the main color, like a normal paint, and then seep away from the highlights. You can already see there, if you look at sort of the eyebrow ridges, how the paint is pulling away from those and into the recesses, that combined with what we've already done with the shading will give an amazing finish with some great contrast between the light and the dark. So now I'm going to go around with this contrast paint and just go over all of the exposed bits of which there's quite a lot on this model. I've given the skeleton horde plenty of time to dry in order to just show off what it looks like when it's dried. As you can see, like I mentioned earlier, it pulls away from the highlights and settles in the recesses, making it a very quick and easy way to paint bulk miniatures. Next up, I've got some snake bite leather, also a contrast paint. And for this, I'm going to pick out all of these leathery strap areas. So over here, there's a lot of frayed leather on the side of the arm. 
on the other side of the arm, the leather is still sort of intact. And I'm going to use the same color just to pick out a few more things such as his leather coin purse, uh, as well as all of these little bits of straps on his arms and legs. With the snake bite leather on there, I'm now going to take my Black Templar, a very dirty bottle of Black Templar, and I'm going to use this to pick out the boots down here. Oh, my cat's meowing in the background. <laughs> I'm going to pick out the belt, and I'm going to pick out his little arm things. And then I'm going to go give my cat some attention. <laughs> With those colors done, all the straps and leathery bits are all sorted, and now I just have to do his clothing. I figured I'd brighten it up a bit, maybe in his life before he became a servant of the undead, he was like a city guard and had guard uniform on. So I've got some Dark Angels green. I thought this is a nice color, being a green, but still a dark, darker than, say, orc flesh for example and this I will do his pants as well as uh, this I guess you can call it a collar around his neck here so I'm going to go around now with the dark angels green and pick out all of this part of the clothing and then to complement that dark green I've got some blood angels red a nice rich dark red and that will be for whatever's left of his shirt. All of the contrasts are done, and all that's left of his is his sword. I've got here a tiny bit of lead bulger. This is a regular metallic paint, not a contrast, seeing as there are no metallic contrast paints. And this will just be used to pick out his sword. At the same time, while I had this lead bulger out, I'm going to carefully dot in little studs on the leather. And finally, I'm going to finish the way I started, with a touch of Agrax Earthshade, just to dirty up and darken down the metallics. With that done, I'm just going to pop a little base on him, and he'll be done. And there we go, the spooky skeleton now has a sufficiently snowy, spooky base. I must say, I really like how this came out. It's almost like a dark, grungy contrast instead of a bright, vivid contrast. Anyway, I'll put a link down below if you'd like to purchase this model. If you have any questions about how I printed it, how I painted it, how I based it, just pop it in the comments. As you can see, I'm a very, very new YouTube channel. Uh, so I appreciate any comments, suggestions, likes, subscriptions, all those wonderful algorithm appeasing things. Until next time, cheers.